everybody. Welcome to another YDA chat. My name is Linda Cadega, they, them pronouns, and I'm one of the features editors for SHOTS. Joining me today is Jesse Lewis Reese, who won four YDA gold screen awards this year. They won for the their five minute film Eyelash in the categories of short film under six minutes, changing the world frame by frame, passion project, and the special jury prize. Um, so quite a sweep for uh, <laughs> A young director here. Uh, and Jesse, can you take a few minutes to sort of introduce yourself and how you got started in directing? Yeah, sure. Uh, first, hi everyone. Thanks for having me as well. Uh, it's great to be part of one of these uh, interviews with the, the YDA locks. I've watched previous ones from in the earlier years, so it's great to be involved. Um, yeah, basically I'm, I'm from uh, the UK, so sort of Brighton, which is down, down from London, sort of on the coast, and um, always been interested in, in filmmaking and got my start really just picking up a camera when I was a sort of teenager doing skate videos down local skate park with friends and kind of became the one out of the group, you know, to always have a camera and kind of document what, what was going on. And that was my first kind of step into making films, as well as always being super interested in sort of going to the cinema and stuff. So eventually when I got to around sort of 18, 19, the years that you kind of decide maybe you want to go to university, start to study something or like pursue something, kind of had the thought of like, why not give a sort of proper filmmaking course a crack and learn how to do maybe films that aren't just like skateboarding videos and stuff. So then I studied at Bournemouth Arts, which is, um, a university down here that was meant to be really great for film production and I sort of just went a, a bit blindsided into an interview not having I thought I had barely any chance of getting in but I managed to slip in and then from there I kind of really discovered what directing was and kind of found that that is the kind of area within filmmaking that I would love to be involved in and sort of mixing that with writing it's kind of found yeah my time there is where I really found out what a director was and that was kind of fitted with what I would, would like to do in terms of filmmaking and, and just from there it's just been crazy like just trying to make short films where I can with my collaborators and friends that I met there and just trying to kind of break into the industry really and then something like the YDA come along after making a few shorts is like an amazing crazy experience you know, even though it was all kind of done virtually <laughs> yeah I'm I can't imagine what like going on festival circuits is like nowadays. It's just got to be like really very, very different and very strange for a lot of people. Yeah, it was, it was mad. Um, especially with like the kind of results this year for, for our film, um, having, you know, kind of, I saw when I got the shortlist email to Stephen B including the short list, short list, I was kind of running around being kind of excited to even that. So, when it came to the actual like ceremony thing they created like the live stream mm -hmm. and, and to win kind of as many as we did it was like it kind of didn't feel real because it yeah. was like online as well and like nothing had changed in my kind of surroundings but online it was like we'd won all these crazy awards and it, yeah I think the whole coronavirus but making everything kind of online mm -hmm. just added for me to the kind of it all didn't feel real because it was just kind of happening on a computer screen. But then I was seeing my name and and the picture, of uh, the poster of the film and stuff like that. And it all started to sink in like about a day or two after it <laughs> come in. Totally. And speaking of eyelash, um, I had the opportunity to watch Bleach earlier in the year. And it really feels like eyelash is a very clear development from Bleach, right? And I'm wondering, um, can you sort of summarize for us like eyelash the film and explain like where the idea actually like came from and how it developed? Yeah, sure. So um, basically the I, the I saw, so the film is an adaptation of a really great poet, Neil Hilborns. Um, he's a spoken word artist and he's done a lot of great sort of poetry uh, performances over the years and he's got quite a following online and he had this one called OCD which is kind of like an insight into his first uh, romantic relationship experience um, through the eyes of someone who suffers with like OCD on a, on a quite high level uh, to the to the point that it's, the poem's kind of about how the 
OCD kind of infiltrated the relationship and at the start it was kind of a positive endearing thing and then as the relationship went on it kind of was the thing that unraveled it and I just always I saw it on that on YouTube like years ago it was like when I just started film school I, I didn't have the tools to make films at the time that I, uh, I saw it but I always thought it would be an amazing short film because the poem was just so powerful so it was like it was just like reading a really powerful script even though there was kind of no film to it because the performance it, and itself was enough was like more than powerful enough so but it was a very visual piece though like his writing is extremely visual and visceral and, and the way he describes living with OCD and, and just the thing that really interested me about it was how it was so specific in terms of it's a really specific lens on someone's experience but at the same time it was it's so universal because I feel like everyone goes through things in relationships where you know those things at the start that are endearing and then by the end those are the kind of things that you might you, that unravel it all and the things that you kind of the things you thought you loved about someone can end up being the things that you just despise at the end and vice versa like I think it's a very oh, universal right. topic of 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 just kind of like the cyclical nature of relationships like they they seem to a lot of them start off one place and they kind of go in this crazy circle sometimes and I yeah. just thought it was a really amazing five minute quick piece of poetry that really encapsulated like like I said like a universal take on relationships but also specific enough to be really interesting and different from from everything else and I just come off the back of doing my sort of graduation like thesis film at and my university, which was Bleach, the film you mentioned, which was kind of like a 25 minute drama that was like very, you know, almost like, give or take for the, for the best, but almost like a piece of television, you know, 25 minutes. It was a, there was a lot of content, a lot of, you know, just experimenting with filmmaking and being with an actor for that amount of time was, was the longest shoot I'd done at the time, which is like sort of six, seven days and being with an actor. and. And it was very loose, you know, we improvised and, and we sort of changed things on the day. And it was a really great experience to what would kind of would hope to be like stepping into features. Like it was the first kind of taste of having a, a bit more than like one day or something to shoot mm -hmm. something. So we really ran with it and kind of experimented and did a lot of improvisation, which kind of in the end <laughs> for the cutting room, it was quite a long, short film at like 25 minutes but it was a great experience. But coming off the back of it, I wanted to do something kind of in the polar opposite to, to kind of refresh myself as a, as a filmmaker, but also to show that I could do something a bit more contained and a bit more like right. slick in terms of like something that was more specific. And because obviously the kind of way the world is now, you know, people, mm -hmm. we're all guilty of it. Like you click off things like 30 seconds into watching something, sure. even, even if it's got like great, production value it's just like the way yeah. we're so kind of culturized now to just we need instant gratification so like mm -hmm. I um I definitely wanted to make something that was like really sharp and short but also had a really impactful message mm -hmm. and uh, the poem just literally stuck around in my head for about seven years since the first time I saw it to when we were actually making it yeah and um just kind of went from there. I was kind of at a loss of uh, what to do after film school. And so I managed to pull some money together, like my own savings and just grab a lot of the friends that I'd made bleach with and pulled them down to Brighton for a weekend. And we just shot it over a Saturday and Sunday. And, and then I kind of sat with, and I edited it as well. So I kind of sat with it over the next few months after that, mm -hmm. just kind of chipping away at it, trying to find, the best way to kind of condense everything that he was trying to say in the poem and match that visually and and with sound and music and yeah so to summarize like to, <laughs> what I mean, but just to do something like polar opposites what i'd done before which was something shorter and more concise but try to keep it impactful yeah absolutely and you mentioned you that you edited this film and i'm wondering if you could talk about what that was like and if you think that like directing eyelash made it harder to edit or were you very intuitive with what you were shooting and like, Oh, I know exactly where this is going or was it like, how was that experience? Yeah, it's funny. Actually, I was asked a similar question at another kind of film festival thing. And, and it was quite, we were laughing about it because it was quite funny. Um, 
it was like, oh, you edited it as well. Was that like a, that was like a conscious choice, you know, to start uh, to go with the the rhythm of the film and stuff, which I'll get onto in a sec. But also, it was if it was probably the main reason was because I it was a self funded project, and you know, I right. <laughs> spent I'd spent money like on every aspect of the production, and by the time it, we got to post, it was like. I didn't have a, a dime <laughs> left, like, so it was always going to be like me editing it with. Sure. Cause I had a background in editing as well, and I just yeah. thought, you know, because it's always great to get a fresh pair of eyes on on the project, like an editor who's maybe not there for the production or the yeah, absolutely, shoot, and they can really bring something something different to it, which is exactly kind of what happened on my last film. But with this, it was um, it was also the nature of this film. It was like it was less about me working as a director with you know performance and like scenes and dialogue and like mm -hmm. you know the film's led by Neil's kind of writing VO so you know my job as the director kind of with this one it was a bit different it was like when I was directing it was like I was editing live if you know what I mean I it had a very specific uh, kind of way I you know I knew kind of exactly what bits on each line of the VO and every mm -hmm. second kind of I had planned before because I knew it needed to be more concise and, and less loose and free as, as my sort of last short film. So I kind of felt like with this project, it really suited the director to be the editor because it was kind of like a, a lot of the film is in the editing, I think. And yeah. my job as the director was to kind of get those exact pieces and, and fit them together in that way. Totally. Um, what part of this shoot and editing, you know, like what part of eyelash was the most challenging? I would say the most challenging part was probably a combination of like getting everyone together to do it uh, in the first place. Because I think as we speak to any filmmaker, it is, it's, a, it's a battle to get anything made, let alone something that you're actually sort of proud of at the end of, at the end of all of it. And um, you know, I was just trying to pull my friends that I'd gone to university with off in different directions, you know, cinematographer friends who sort of break into commercials and stuff like that. And I was trying to pull them away from <laughs> commercials, uh, money and stuff for, for a weekend to um, to shoot something with literally no budget and more, more of just, yeah, like a passion project. And right. luckily everyone I work with is so like, was so up for it and so passionate about it. And And the second thing was probably just, especially once I was sitting with it in post, like the shoot was kind of a whirlwind and it was actually an amazing experience. But yeah. once I was in the edit, it was like just make, like telling myself every day, like I have to make this live up to the poem, like the original writing right. and kind of coming to peace with that myself like in the edit. I spent a long time in the edit because I was mm -hmm. very, I didn't want to release, like to finish it unless I felt I'd kind of given it everything I could to, to try and live up to the original yeah. poem because you know one it's such an amazing piece and and two you know it already had quite a following the the, the poem itself so it would be sort of wrong with me to try and just release something quickly if that was to like suit me better so i really sat on it for for, for the best part of a year even though it's like a five minute film i really mm -hmm. spent a lot of time in the edit getting feedback doing different styles of cuts one of the main things was we completely changed the music like really late into the into the edit we kind of were ready to go with a whole different score and then me and the composer sat down one day just before mm -hmm. it was kind of like we can't go back and we watched it together and we just both kind of looked at each other and it was this kind of like light bulb moment where we were like it feels quite complete but i think the music is is not serving the story in the way that we need to be you know, it was great music yeah. and we'd worked on it for ages, but it wasn't, it didn't serve Neil's writing as well mm -hmm. as, as it needed to. And then we kind of sat, stayed up for like nights on end with coffee and, and we redid the entire score to the film. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm so glad we did that because I think it is actually a vital point in changing um, yeah. the film's kind of, it was only after we did that, I felt that it kind of, I'd done everything I can to sort of try and live up to Neil's words and, and luckily it's been it's been quite a good response since we did that <laughs> yeah something worked did yeah something, you did something right <laughs> for sure um cool i'm gonna go to the question about um as a director you have dealt with a lot of issues that are very challenging um bleach 
dealt with a trans narrative um, and family abuse. And this is obviously about mental illness and like there's some hints in this poem about depression and, and clearly it's about OCD. And I'm sort of wondering, how do you engage with these topics in a way that feels authentic and also vibrant and approachable and also very respectful of the people who are living through these experiences? Yeah, I think um, I think when you want to be when you want to get to a place where you want to to sort of direct or you know make films yourself, you have to you only have to look at the films that have you know done things and moved people in ways, and that they always come from a place of of having sort of respect for the for the material or or the or just the themes like behind the film, and you have to kind of make things that are important to you and and yeah I I think I'm very early on in, in my sort of career as a director but I would hope that I'm going down a route of like always thinking first about what does it mean to to make this film like what are the themes behind it what am I trying to mm -hmm. say is it is it worth you know someone's time to watch it you know yeah. iridescent of, of loving the the kind of craft of making films I think you have to before you go into something, you have to really think, is it, is it worth putting this time and effort into? And, and is it, you know, is it gonna not change something, but is it gonna speak to that subject matter and, and make people maybe think in a different way or understand someone's uh, sort of viewpoint that they might not have thought of before. So I really try and so far, like the couple of shorts I've made, you know, deal with themes that are important to me, I think would be important to other people, but also I think you just have to, you just have to go with that gut feeling. Like, you know, you can, you can sit around and talk about subjects that you want to, to approach and, and you think would be interesting. But I think deep down uh, the, the films that I've actually managed to get, to get made, um, they always get dragged over the line by like the just sheer connection, I think to, to the, to the themes or the material that just make you make it happen no matter what whereas uh, in the terms of eyelash i just felt so strongly about it that i kind of did anything i could to make it happen in terms of i literally used every penny i had to like kind of make that film like i just left my sort of job and i just used all my savings to like do the the weekend shoot and and it, it was funny because I look back on it now and I, you kind of think like what are you doing because like it's quite like i just had like it was just a determination where I was just like, I'm just going to make it no matter what happens. Like I'll just spend every penny I have and use every resource I can. And I think, yeah, you can only really give it that sort of drive when you've kind of are that connected to the material. So I think finding stuff that you actually really relate to and sort of connect with is like what drives you as a filmmaker. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's pretty incredible that like, you risked it all basically on this like one film and it's really yeah. good off. Um, and I've, I'm really excited for you to risk it all again. I'm just like, what's next? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Wish I could say the same. <laughs> oh it's going to be great. Um, yeah. Cool. So I think. But no, uh, yeah, it was cool. It was amazing. Yeah. I think we're, we're on to our last question, which is what does it mean for you to win this much recognition and this much um appreciation from yda specifically and what can we expect to see from you in the future yeah first off you know i can i can hardly still even talking about with you like we're doing this zoom call right now and it's like about all of this and it still just kind of feels like that it didn't happen in a, in a i just couldn't believe especially it just happened in like the most like crazy way it could have because I've, sub I've submitted to other festivals and it had play it's played in other festivals and mm -hmm. and but I I watched a film from a couple of years ago that um, was in the YDA and that kind of introduced me to the whole YDA like thing like mm -hmm. that happens every year and I got really like into it I would watch all the films from previous years and previous winners and I kind of became really like it was like a big thing for me I was checking in like when the submissions would be opening and I was kind of getting ready to do the you know like the fill out the form and stuff and I was and I then came to it and I did it and I was checking like every sort of literally every couple of weeks from when the submissions closed to like 
and I, I kind of I didn't do that as much with like any other festival or uh, and I and then I started to get a bit worried because I was like I put so much like I was checking so much and I was like you know it's it's a highly kind of competitive thing and it's like mm-hmm. if we don't make if we don't get a sort of short list for one one of my first shorts then you know that's just something to learn and maybe try for next year or try to find another project that could maybe lead us down that point but but then I got the email of the shortlist and I just kind of couldn't believe it like and it was like I'd almost willed it out of like the mm-hmm. universe to happen yeah and and that's just me talking about what getting the shortlist so when the actual event came it was just I literally couldn't believe it like when it happened because we won first we won one gold and it was just like we were I was actually on holiday at the time with my girlfriend and her best friend and um we kind of trying to get 4g to like run the stream like in our kind of garden of our sort of airbnb thing mm. and um, it was kind of lagging and then we were trying to connect to the wi-fi and we were running all around to try and get the stream working and then i was kind of like a bag of nerves like and we were sort of drinking a bit of wine and trying to make it a bit of like a bit of an evening and then yeah the first one came in like we'd won the gold screen i think it was like um short it might have been passion project so i can't remember but um yeah and then we were just sort of one of the around. gold screens one of my yeah. many <laughs> gold screens yeah. and then yeah just one after another kind of for the categories we were in they just kept coming in and it just by the end i was just like this can't be actually happening like is this some sort of joke or something and then even on top of that like to get the judges jury award and and have karim sort of do that speech at the end that kind of mm-hmm. Uh, it was just like it was just unbelievable it was like, it mean so much to me as a filmmaker to to make something that I think what YDA was so great was I couldn't kind of believe I'd made something where people from all over the world in their different <laughs> their different zoom meetings had, had watched it and had sort of put it through you know because the YDA jury is like famous for kind of being international you know it was li- yeah the judges were literally in all different places around the globe from like Japan to Brazil, America, France, the like UK. It was literally a global thing and, and to be recognised by all those people as like as when they come together to pick certain projects that they feel that they connected to, for it to be one of my own, it just meant like the world. And That's I could great. just only only hope to use their kind of platform to try and push to get more projects made and I'm hoping to sort of do that really after this crazy experience. <laughs> That sounds great, though. That's really good. Um, Yeah, honestly, congratulations. Eyelash is really impactful. I really loved it when I got to watch it. Um, Yeah, thank you so much for this interview, Jesse. Thank you for having me. In my lovely office. (laughs) (laughs) It is a nice office. It's a very very professional office in upstate (laughs) New York. (laughs) Anyway. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Again, this is I'm Linda Cudega, and this is Jesse Lewis Reese. Um, and bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>